Good morning. Good morning. My name is Elizabeth Mosley Hawkins, and I am Senior Director for Strategic Communications with South Carolina State University's Public Service and Agriculture Program. As a state agency, PSA serves as the cornerstone of South Carolina State University's historical land grant status and is committed to playing an active and results driven role in improving the quality of life for all South Carolinians through innovative research, research based education, and life changing outreach services and programs. I have the pleasure today of presiding over the program and um, or over this announcement, which we'll soon learn about. Um, I do want to note that this program is being recorded and will be made available on our digital platforms, so YouTube and Facebook, and our um, profile handle is at SC State 1890. So now I'm pleased to introduce our first speaker, President Alexander Conyers. Would you join me? <laughs> I am super, super, super delighted to welcome each of you here today. Let me first take a moment to acknowledge supporters, friends, staff, and guests who have joined us here today. Elected officials, officials from Bamberg County, South Carolina State Board of Trustees, Dr. Shuler, thank you, SC State University faculty, staff, and especially our great students, South Carolina State University alumni, program participants, and participating Climate Smart farmers and producers. Welcome to each of you. About one year ago, we gathered on campus for two separate occasions to celebrate and announce milestones in the university's history. First, we announced South Carolina State and Clemson universities were recipients for a $70 million Climate Smart Commodities Partnership Grant awarded by the U.S. Department of Agriculture, Natural Resources, Conservation Services. The grant was the largest single state award from a federal agency in the history of both South Carolina State University and Clemson. And we were one of three projects awarded over $70 million led by universities and one of two projects dedicated to a single state. Shortly after that, the NRCS awarded the university an additional $4.5 million Climate Smart grant recognized as the first public, private, and nonprofit grant award in the university's history. The project established strategic partnerships with the university, Mixon, Seed Service, and the South Carolina Black Farmers Coalition. Now today we gather to celebrate yet another groundbreaking accomplishment in the South Carolina State University's history. The unveiling of the revived product line, which is the first major outcome of the award. Through scientific innovation, teams at South Carolina State and Mixed and Seed Service crafted two specialty blends of cover crop seed mixes, both bearing the South Carolina State name the products are the Revive South Carolina State Salad Mix and the Revive South Carolina State 1890 Mix. Let's take a moment to recognize the development of these two products with the round of applause, please. <laughs> the bags that you see here on the stage represent more than innovation. The seeds contained in these bags will cultivate increased profits for participating climate smart farmers and producers, grow economic development for the state of South Carolina and beyond, and when used as a conservation practice will mitigate the effects of climate change, making a healthier and more sustainable environment for us all. On behalf of South Carolina State University, I want to thank Dr. Robert Etheridge owner of Mixon Sea Service. Let's give him a round of applause. Thank you. And his team for working collaboratively with our researchers, extension agents, and administrators in, a, in developing the products and bringing it to market. Today's announcement best exemplifies the power of partnership. Now, before I take my seat, 
I'm also pleased to announce that each participating Climate Smart Farmer who have joined us today will receive one complimentary bag of this seed. We hope that you will find the use of the products beneficial to you and your farm management practices and towards successful growth of your crops. And I want to thank Dr. Whitesides and his team, the entire 1890 Research and Extension team, for working diligently to bring this partnership to fruition. This is an example, a sterling example, of what partnerships are all about. And again, I want to thank the leadership at Mixing Seed, thank the leadership at our 1890 Research and Extension for this wonderful opportunity for South Carolina State University, Mixing Seed, and the farmers in South Carolina. This is certainly a win-win situation. Thank you very much. Thank you, President Conyers. All right, so now I'm pleased to introduce Dr. Lamine Drame. Dr. Drame is the Associate Vice President for SC State PSA. He'll deliver the occasion. Liz, how many minutes do I have? Two hours? <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. It is indeed a great day here at South Carolina State University. Mr. President, thank you. I think my work is much easier now. We are here for a special occasion, the President mentioned, the unveiling of a special project. As institution of higher learning, we are, we are designed to create innovative solutions to complex global challenges. Climate change is a complex global challenge. Food security and insecurity and food safety is a complex global challenge. Equipment that the farmers will use to produce the food the cost of that equipment, the technology associated with it, are complex global challenges. The president mentioned public-private partnership. To solve these issues, collaboration, partnership, coordination are essential. Let's look back four years when I first met Robert Etheridge. Dr. Weiser and I were at Ruby Tuesday having a conversation way before words, where words like climate change was added to the lexicon of climate smart agriculture. Conservation practice, cover cropping become a household name. In those conversations, we had ideas. How do we help agriculture become the best in South Carolina? That's the motivation. How do we grow agriculture? A $51 billion economy, 280 something thousand workforce. How do we participate in that in advancing the quality of life and the standard of living of the people of South Carolina. That was the issue. We met early 2021. Then we met again here with David Bishop. I don't know whether he's here from Nature Conservancy. We are talking about cover crop. And we had a meeting here with Ronnie Summers from the Palmetto Agribusiness Council talking about how can we address this unique problem about the farmers? What does that mean for them? So cover cropping was being discussed. The engine, the fuel that we needed, the injection to get us going, is the two initiatives the president mentioned that came from USDA, the Climate Smart Agriculture Practices. Now today we are here unveiling something that is a product of collaboration, ingenuity, science, technology, and research. We have to meet the farmer where they are. We have to meet the customer where they are. We have to meet the inventor where they are. So these are the issues that we are at hand. So when we plan this program, I want us to reflect on a few things here. It is always possible in social science, that is, that change comes from the person of individuals. An exquisite relationship between mixing seed and South Carolina State University to create the first of its kind in the country, the very first of its kind, two product lines, for cover crop blends produced on a collaborative manner that will address the quality of life and standard of living. And what are the benefits? Can we replace cover crop with fertilizer? Pesticides and herbicides. They can benefit from less irrigation. How do you call it? Less erosion. They can benefit from quality of soil. They can benefit from organic matter, organic content, soil health. And by then, they can maybe perhaps even increase their productivity and their yield. 
while maintaining environmental stewardship necessary for us to live in a healthy environment. So we are here unveiling those products. And these products will undoubtedly improve climate change, which is the overarching objective for the federal government, the overarching objective for the state. These cover crops are designed to address the challenges in our various soil types across the state. These cover crops are affordable and they are available for all farmers in South Carolina and beyond. So it's a magnificent opportunity and a test of collaboration. And in closing, we know what Margaret Mead said. Never doubt what a small group of thoughtful, committed individuals can change the world. In fact, it is the only thing. When mixing seed, South Carolina State met at Ruby Tuesday and met again at South Carolina State University campus early 2021 and met again on the farm here looking at a product that might be relevant to improve the quality of life and the citizens of, the citizens of South Carolina, particularly our farmers, small and large. That is the issue. And today we are here saying thank you so much for the trust the people of South Carolina have in South Carolina State, the trust the U.S. government have in us, and we have here a national program leader from USDA who came here to say and show his support in what we do and what we do every day to improve our research work, to improve our collaboration with U.S. government. Thank you so very much. So now we'll have our partner's remarks, and in the following order, um, Mr. Darvis Jordan, who's the associate, excuse me, assistant state conservationist for partnerships with NRCS, followed by Dr. Robert Etheridge, who's owner of Mix and Seed. And then we'll also have Mr. Sam Quinney, who's director of agricultural programs with South Carolina Department of Agriculture. I have one question before I go into my uh, comments. The meeting at Ruby Tuesday, was that before or after the salad bar? <laughs> it was before. He was before, before. The, I mean, considering that this is a salad mix, was it, be was it before or after the salad bar? So. <laughs> President Conyers, thank you so much. Uh, Dr. Whitesides, thank you so much. Uh, my good friend. Uh, I'm going to call him Robert. I recognize he has a, he has a, a doctorate and all of this stuff. I'm calling him Robert. Thank you so much. Um, Dr. Dremay, thank you. Uh, it's good to see my friend, Matthew Denton. Good to see you, Matthew. Hadn't seen you in about two years. So on behalf of, and good morning to everyone who showed up on this, this beautiful Monday that worked out for us. So um, I just want to commend South Carolina State University. I want to commend Mix and Seed. And on behalf of the United States Department of Agriculture and Natural Resources Conservation Services, on behalf of our chief, uh, Terry Cosby, our state conservationist, our acting state conservationist, Jamie Keith, and through the Office of uh, the Regional Conservationist, I just want to extend our uh, excitement for this particular project. When we were made aware of this collaborative effort between SC State uh, and Mixon, uh, we undoubtedly knew that the work that would be produced would not only meet what is the ask when it comes down to Inflation Reduction Act uh, funding as regards to climate smart conservation, but we also knew that uh, the project deliverables would exceed what is outlined under those particular requests. And so to be here uh, and see these particular seed mixes produced and to know that what SC State and what Mixon are working towards to help historically underserved producers, farmers, and landowners in the state of South Carolina to help uh, producers, farmers, and landowners in the state of South Carolina, and then to help just the novice individuals, such as myself, who may work in agriculture, but still wants to know a few things about the word regenerative agriculture and who wants better understanding with regards to climate smart practices. It is our pleasure and honor to not only partner with both of these particular institutions and fund this particular project, but also to lend, to lend our technical and, of course, financial assistance uh, to the work that is being accomplished. Uh, we know and are sure that 
this particular mix will not only be of great benefit to the producers, farmers, and landowners in the state of South Carolina, but it will also end up being a great benefit to the producers, farmers, and landowners uh, across the Southeast and across the country. So we don't take uh, the events and the announcement of this today to be something small or to be something light. This is monumental. This is something that will uh, undoubtedly shift elements of what we know as climate smart agriculture and what we know as um, an opportunity to address natural resource concerns, particularly as it pertains to soil health, uh, water quality and water quantity, as well as air uh, health. So again, we are just delighted to be here, delighted to be a part of this and delighted to partner with these two great institutions as they have been able to not only meet this one particular accomplishment, but I'm sure to meet other particular accomplishments as they continue to move down the road in this project. So again, to everyone here, thank you for your attendance and to the folks on this platform, uh, thank you so much for your diligence and to all parties who are part of this work, thank you for your efforts as we move forward in this. So thank you. Uh, good morning, everyone. Um, let me just say uh, to the South Carolina State Leadership Team, thank you guys. Um, tremendous, tremendous work. Uh, <clears throat> just as I stand here um, representing Mix and Seed, again, we're thrilled to be a part of, uh, just thrilled to be a part of the work. Um, <clears throat> Dr. Dromay does a really good job of kind of taking me back to where this all began, uh, Ruby Tuesdays, and, and that would not be, uh, would not have happened without Ronnie Summer. So Ronnie, let me just tell you again, um, thank you for uh, doing what you do best, which is network. And if you, you've already, <clears throat> excuse me, you've already heard it. Yeah, um, I think just the power of collaboration, uh, if I think back on kind of our journey to this point, um, collaboration really does stand out. Uh, and, and just give you a little a thumbnail sketch of us. So Mixon, uh, we work from Southern Virginia through both of the Carolinas, Georgia, most of Alabama, and maybe the northern half of Florida. So it's a, it's a lot of territory that, that uh, we're blessed to be able to, uh, to serve. Um, but it's, but it's, it stands out to me across all that landscape. Um, there's more work taking place in the state of South Carolina in this vein of climate smart ag uh, than anywhere else. And so again, I think it's, it's not by chance, right? It's through great work uh, here and, and great leadership. And so again, we're just, number one, we're thrilled to be uh, just a, a small part of that. Um, but I, I guess I'll expand on that collaboration point uh, just a little more. Um, uh, Dr. Dramay and I were talking, or, or Dr. Whitesides and I were talking just a few minutes ago before we came on stage. Um, I think that old commercial about staying in your swim lane uh, really does hold true, right? We knew there were some things that we were pretty good at, right? We can get product made uh, in a bag and branded and moved around. Uh, we've got some pretty good insights also in terms of what fits. Um, but it was a really interesting discussion as we got talking to Dr. Noro and her team uh, on what was the right mix not for the Southeast, but for uh, South Carolina and for the South Carolina State constituency in particular. And so a couple of innovative things really popped up out of that. Um, you know, we, we do cover crop in, in huge volumes, um, but this was the first time that we had ever had anybody say, hey, if we're gonna do that, why don't we put something in there that's edible so it acts as a food source on farm and could even be taken out commercially to sale. And so if you think about the SC State um, salad mix, that's kind of what was behind that. So again, a real innovation in terms of the product. Um, but the other thing, and, and you've heard two different grants um, that have been referred to. Uh, again, I think um, the South Carolina State team did a phenomenal job of innovating how that model would work. And so they're actually providing the seed uh, for those that want to participate. So again, I think just two great examples of some innovative thinking in uh, not just resigning to do the same thing uh, we've, uh, we've, we've always done. Um, so you heard a little bit about kind of what we do. Uh, the thing that is, is Dr. Dramay and I uh, and Dr. Whiteside really sat down and, and started to talk through this. Um, it, you know, it's pretty clear uh, that the environmental impacts, again, I think we know that, cleaner water, uh, you know, we keep things in place. We're not losing soil to wind erosion, water erosion. Um, we know we're taking in CO2 and get off, giving off oxygen. So all the right things to do. 
especially for a sensitive ecosystem like we are blessed with in the state of South Carolina. Um, so that's all good, and we kind of expect that. Um, the thing that really got me and, and us as a mixing team motivated uh, is is that it's um, it's a chance to do something uh, with a segment of growers that, quite frankly, often get you know get overlooked and or underserved, and so. It's not many times that you get to do the right thing for the environment and the right thing for people. Yeah, but man, what a great, how, how proud I am to stand here before you and say this is that, right? It's just the right thing. Um, and so again, I have great expectations and, and really this is just the beginning. Uh, I, was, I was talking to uh, um, Darvis um, before we came up and uh, again, there's a lot of work to do. We, we're hopeful that the funding level will continue as we go forward. Think about the farm bill, and ideally we get some of this funding baked into that so it becomes this ongoing thing. Um, but, but again, we've got, we don't know if that'll happen or not, but what we do know is we've got funding today, and, and it's really a bet. It's really a bet on the quality of work that we're gonna produce, and again, I'm super confident um, that that will happen with this project and that it'll only pave the way for, uh, for future work. So, um, Dr. Dramay, I gotta, I gotta call you out. I love that quote, um, never underestimate the power of change when you get committed people together. And I love that line. And from the moment I met this guy, he exudes that. And so again, it's, for us, it's the right thing to do and it's a fun project and we're, we're glad to be a part of it. So, thank you guys. Well, uh, fifth in line to talk, so I'll try and not cover what other everyone else has covered today. So, uh, but anyway, um, my name's Sam Quinney. I'm with the South Carolina Department of Ag. Uh, first off, I want to thank every party involved, uh, SC State 1890, um, NRCS folks, um, Mix and Seed everyone. Um, also, I'd like to mention as a former extension agent, shout out to the extension agents and all the other farm, farm tech employees and everyone that, that were actually the boots on the ground, getting their hands dirty and doing all the processes for it. Um, every, everyone has to be at the table in order to make something like this work. Um, we're excited to see the partnerships that, uh, that this Climate Smart Commodities Program has, has involved. Um, we, uh, we definitely understand the importance of having all those folks at the table um, with our growers in South Carolina, um, with, with trying to get our public organizations together and then trying to connect the private organizations as well. Um, this is just one, overall a great example of the public sector and the private businesses working to get together. Um, and we appreciate South Carolina State working closely uh, with Mix and Seed and other private businesses uh, in order to show the commitment to our state and to our farmers. Um, this is an awesome dual purpose product. Um, soil health, uh, increasing organic matter, all sorts of different aspects of that, and overall increasing food insecurities in the state of South Carolina. So again, thank y'all for having me. Um, just being really quick today, um, but again, thank y'all. Thank y'all for everyone being in attendance today. Um, it's important to be here and see these innovations going on within agriculture in the state of South Carolina. And it's important to see that it started and it finished here in the state of South Carolina. So thank y'all. So there were two, well, there was one key word that uh, Mr. Jordan said and Dr. Etheridge, they mentioned the word funding. <laughs> All of this would not be possible without funding that we, you know, receive from our um, USDA partners. And so I know that Dr. Whitesides and Dr. Germay, they're just itching to reach out to other agencies so that we can get more funding and put in place other programs that will help um, the state's small and um, minority farmers. So um, thank you all so much for your participation in, um, in partnership with us. So I'm now pleased to introduce our next speaker, Mr. Antonio Beatty. Uh, Mr. Beatty is the owner of Beatty Produce Farm. It's a veteran-owned farm in Loris, South Carolina, and he is one of our participating Climate Smart Farmers. Mr. Beatty? I ain't got no paper to read off of. Um, I didn't come prepared like everybody else, but thank all of y'all for having me. Uh, I don't see her. Dr. Crawford, me and her grew up together right down the road, went to school together. Without her, I wouldn't be in this program. Darren Moses, my security guard, he's another farmer. <laughs> me and him go back and forth about this, but Climate Smart being good to me. Oh, Travis, I appreciate you. Uh, I've never done this before, I'm kind of nervous, but Climate Smart, 
being very good to me, it helped me out tremendously uh, with the erosion, with the practices. I've been a farmer for a long time, since I was five years old. I know I look young, but I'm kind of old. Um, so I've been doing it. Now I'm putting my practices into good use, helping with the erosion, my weed control, everything. Uh, doctor, I ain't want to pronounce your last name wrong, but that doctor right there with the hat looking at me. Real good guy. He, he helped me along the way. Um, it was wonderful. Good, great program. Glad it, I was able to join in it. Glad y'all here that was in it. Um, when they told me, Miss um, Liz, somebody was going to come up here, I said, you, are you sure you want me? Because I'm not that kind of guy, but of course I came. So I went back to South Carolina State, 1890. So I came. Great program. I wish everybody get in. The new program, I'm excited. Um, excited for it. Uh, I think Dr. Mixon. I'm named Dr. Etheridge of Mixon. See you come there. I appreciate it. I'm going to put it to use. I uh, hope everybody put it to use and look forward to it. And you also get a stipend for it, so that make it a little better. <laughs> Thank y'all. <laughs> Thank you so much for sharing your experiences. So we just have one more individual on the program. That is Dr. Lewis Whitesides, who is the Vice President for Public Service and Agriculture, and he also serves as the Executive Director for 1890 Research and Extension. Dr. Whitesides. Well, it's, it's how are they going to put me last? <laughs> you know, I've got a whole lot to say, and I see your eyes already getting long out there, like, this going to be over when or that sort of thing, and she's going to put me last in the program. I'm supposed to be first, so y'all can be tired of listening to them talk, not me from the beginning. I'm yeah, I'm going to finish it strong, all right. So I won't take the 30 minutes that I was allotted. <laughs> I'll only take 28. So, but thank y'all for coming, and I'm really going to be brief. I just want to thank y'all for coming and, and sharing this with us. Um, this is a, a journey that we've been on for a long time, trying to get this done. As Dr. Drummay said, it started a few years ago, just a conversation. And I want to thank the farmers that's here for even allowing us to participate with you. You know, it is voluntary. You don't have to do anything. And we just appreciate you all um, believing in us enough to participate in our program. Dwayne, what you doing here? Why you not in school, boy? <laughs> you out today? No, sir. <laughs> you had an excuse? You got an excuse. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> that's a good fellow. He's going to be a big farmer coming up, man. That's, that's, that's a real smart guy. Has a lot going on. You sell peanuts, watermelons. What else you do? Squash. Squash, you kidding me? And he's still in high school. So, yeah, so y'all going to hear about this guy coming up. I just look up and saw him like, what you doing here, Dwayne? <laughs> anyway, you need an excuse for school? I got one. You got one? Okay. But, again, back to the program. This is a great opportunity for us, a great opportunity for the state, and it really aligns with the state of South Carolina and what the Department of Ag is doing, leading us down the road to sustainable agriculture and that sort of thing. So it's in line with everything that the state of South Carolina wants to do, you know, in connection to what the whole world is going through as far as climate change and that sort of thing. Now, people used to deny climate change in the, you know, in the past, you can't deny it no more, can you? So something that's happening, and we have to do something to mitigate it. This is on the way to actually doing that. So cover cropping is a big deal. Um, this right here, again, but as has been announced earlier, is the first in the, in the country to do this. And we're proud that we're able to put our market down as the first of being able to do this. But with that, I do want to recognize some people. Uh, I do want to recognize Mr. Denton again from USDA. Thanks for coming down. Um, to be here with us today. I saw my friend, Ms. Lloyd Funderburk over there from FSA. <laughs> Mr. Rodney Summers in the back. Mr. R always puts all these things together. Where my Bamberg County officials at? Where they at? But there you go. I see Mr. Coleman, T-Square over there. I'm missing somebody behind the podium. Thank you very much. When we first talked about moving out here. They were so open in inviting us into the county and giving us all the support that we actually, actually need. Any other elected officials here I did not recognize? Anyone else? Okay. So, Jenny and Brantley, 
Raise your hands, Rick. So, so, you know, Robert gets up here and does all the talking. Guess who do all the work behind the scenes? You know, he does all the talking, but these are the ladies that be on the ground making it happen, you know. So I do want to recognize, I do want to recognize them. And I recognize our staff. If you work for South Carolina State University, please raise your hand. We have the best staff in the country. I just want y'all to know that. These folks, these folks work tirelessly, you know, day in and day out all the time to make things happen. You know, when y'all in the bed sleeping, but y'all don't sleep, y'all farmers, y'all up all day and all night. So when y'all up, they up also, and they, they making things happen. So we have an excellent staff that's always working to make things happen. I do want to recognize them. And before I go, we have our board member here. Thank for supporting us. Trustee Shuler for coming out. <laughs> I want to thank our USDA liaison, Travis Johnson. He be getting it, gets it done for us all the time. And see, I done messed up now because I just start calling people names. So listen, if I, if I have not called you, please don't get mad with me because I was not supposed to do this, but I saw people that wanted to call their name and I'm taking my glasses off so I can't see now. So if I didn't see you, charge it to my glasses not on. I didn't see you, so I didn't recognize you. But I'm going to close with just thanking our president. Okay, now he's telling me to recognize some other people. He told me not to recognize people. Now he's telling me to recognize people. But I can't leave out our students. Where are our students at? We do have some excellent students over here. we got some students. Please give our students a round of applause. They're the next. Because all, really, all of this really is about workforce development. At the end of the day, this is about who are going to take our places and who's going to do these things. So we have to make sure to continue to invest in our students and make sure that they're taught the right way, the right practices, and that sort of thing to be great stewards of our great stewards of our planet as we go. So now with that, I want to end by thanking our president, President Collins, and I really want to personally thank him because I come to him with some wild ideas all the time. <laughs> And I, I mean, I said a meet with him and come and give him some wild ideas. I know he'd be looking at me like, what is this, what is this, what's this guy talking about, man? I, <laughs> oh, Darvis, no, because <laughs> I call him and tell him the same thing, too. You know, but I want to thank President Collins for just the support. And I said, hey, man, if, if we fail, it's fine, but give me the opportunity to try. And he always does that and supports us. And, and we've been able to be successful because he has given us support. Um, outside of that, I'm going to wrap up. Dr. Hemoth, raise your hand. Recognize my man, Dr. Hemoth. This is our next superstar. <laughs> Dr. Hemoth, I want to talk about him for a second. Dr. Hemoth just joined us from Utah State. And y'all going to be hearing from him pretty soon. He has some patentable things that he's doing with some, um, some drones and some other things that he's doing right now that has not been done before. And he's working on it right now. So y'all going to hear some stuff from him coming up. We met him in Nebraska, and I was like, hey, man, you got to come to South Carolina. And he was like, well, okay, we'll, we'll see. He's here, so I'm glad to see you here. You look cool with your shades on, you know, coming here. You look real cool, so glad to have you on site, man. My man, Dr. Hemoth, he's here. That's great. So with that, thank you all very much for coming, participating. Thanks for all the support. Thank you for everything that you all do to support our program. Is there anything we can do, please feel free to reach out to us and let us know. Thank you very much. I wasn't going to, to get into our history, but Dr. Etridge made a very salient point. He said, not only is this a good thing to do, it's the right thing to do. And when you think about the right thing to do and you think about the history, and I just want everyone here to know while we can always find negative uh, things to talk about in our history, and I'm certainly one of those who don't believe in tripping over things that are behind you. But when I think about these products being sold and South Carolina State receiving a portion of the sales going forward, it takes me back 100 years ago when our sister land grant university, Clemson, received, there was a, a a law passed in South Carolina that gave all of the taxes from all fertilizer in South Carolina went to Clemson University. That's across the state. The entire taxes from every bag of fertilizer went to fund Clemson's extension program. And the history shows that Clemson at that time received more funding in one year from the taxes of fertilizer across the entire state, every farmer, black or white, than South Carolina State received in three to four years of appropriations. Fast forward 100 years ago 
to now. We're standing here with the partnership with not only is this good for the state, it's the right thing to do. So I wanna thank you again. And I just wanted to share that history uh, with those who may not have been aware of that. So again, thanks to everyone for being here. Hang around, we got seed for you and we have lunch for you. So don't go away, thank you. Thank you all for coming.